Black folk art and crafts reflect the spirit of life in rural Mississippi, where artists and craftsmen work with familiar, locally found materials. In each community, the folk build and decorate their homes using traditional patterns which achieve function and beauty. We get up early every morning. If that boy lived over yonder, it's about half a mile over there. We'd always see who's going to be the first enough next morning. And we didn't do like children do today, sleep and lay in the bed, you got to call them up. We'd always get up and see which one's going to holler the first. And uh, with me and my brother, at least I would always try to get up and walk up here on this hill up here so that voice would settle over there and wake him up. And he'd do the same thing if he hadn't beat us up. So I'd walk up there and be early in the morning, you know, and yeah! The folk builder learns his trade from older craftsmen who cut and trim local wood for homes in their community. They build a dog trot home with its central breezeway to survive the hot Mississippi summer. We'd always lay us down a, a jug. You lay down a jugger, and then when you lay that jugger down, you slope your little place on that log and lay that log up on that jugger, and then get up on top of this log with an axe. Just walk up, walk that log, and just chip it, just chip it all the way up. And then take a broad axe, and then one come behind and just, just peel that, cut that off. Back there then, people made boards, you know, old boards. They found them, went out and picked out a good tree. I'd imagine I picked out a big tree, so like that and on, and then cut them so long, and then then get a man to make the boards. Then to put the boards on it. He could take baling wall, uh, seagrass strings, or fake rope, and unravel it, and uh, bottom chill back there. Didn't nobody know too much. We didn't have television and radios and things to, to open your eye like we do today. That's his plan that he laid out. Said he put a hole between it and make it back there then, you know, you didn't have air conditioning and one thing or another. And a hallway in a house makes it cool. So he said he put a hallway in the air and it would make that air would circuit through and make it cool. Didn't nobody have nothing back there then. They all four people was in the same boat together. And so we had bought this little place here and uh, and, and, and wasn't one or able to help the other. So he just done like I done when I bought my place up there. Uh, I just had to figure it out and work it out in my mind. That's what he done. He just worked it out in his mind what he wanted to do. And uh, so that's just where he built it. Oh, I make a uh, basket for uh, probably uh, anything a person want them for. Maybe for uh, cotton baskets, corn baskets, you know. Uh, house, uh, a seed baskets, you know, just like this fellow, you know, I'm a little out there by that long, it's called picnic baskets, you know. Just probably whatever you know, fellow, you know. Over there, I make some, you know, for uh, pocketbooks, you know, purses, you know, like that. Yes, sir, it makes uh, a lot of them for clothes baskets, you know. Like that, you know, a garbage baskets, no like that. I can pull a uh, hickory, I can pull a uh, post oak, and I can pull a uh, long leaf pine if you can find it. Well, see, that's hard to find. You like to go through this country from here, clear on to forest, old young lad, not to find no long leaf pine. But now you take the hickory, 
Now, it's a sudden sort of hickory. Uh, you can get into the pool just like white oak. But now, pools not ever run was white oak. Of course, I pulled some hickory, and I pulled some post oak. But uh, it's just a certain kind you're going to have to get on either. But now, you take white oak, why? It's probably any sort of white oak pool. Now, I used to, uh, if I used to go in the swamps, you know, in the swamp and get it. Now, that puddle of a swamp is just like silk. But this on the hill is the toughest. It's the toughest and, and the best. Been right round ever since 40, ever since 49. Ever since 49. Or 48, I know I won't make them, but I moved in 49. And I started making in 49. Started, me and the fellas started to work together in 49. In fact, Jennings, I didn't even know nothing about them. And so I'd go down and look at him and look at him and look at him. So fine one time, he said, it's easy to learn. I said, I'm going to try it. And so after I started, well, I've been making ever since. Probably I'll get my stuff. I can lay them in uh, five and six at night. Maybe next night I'll run them up, you know, while I have a certain old thing to do. I don't have no trouble selling them. See, all I'm going to do is they come by here and see them. And I said, well, Mr. Vine, there were a good many of them. Yes, sir. Folk artists often find new designs and dreams and reshape cloth and clay as quilts and sculpture. Their art emerges from reused materials which decorate homes with bright colors and express a folk sense of beauty. This print, and this print, and this here print, all over here is print. And you, mm -hmm. how you make your little block about like that, and sew them on, on and on. And then you have your print. Mm -hmm. And the name of it is what you might call a string The name quilt. of it is string quilt. Mm -hmm. That's we string call quilt. it a scrap, scrap yeah. quilt. Well, my mama was quilting by herself, and I was small. And I said, if you run the shell off, I'd quilt. And I went there and quilt. She run it up run the shell off, you know. She took it right there and run it and bring it on up there, and I, I quilt behind. She said, well, I'm done with big and folks now to quilt. <laughs> oh, and sometimes when all of them used to be together, they be quilting at night, oh, oh. have little lights to sit all over the quilt. Little tin lamp. Little tin lamp, and everybody would sit around, and little then quilt. we couldn't see how to thread the needle. They would get the children to come in, mm -hmm. thread the needle for them, and then after a while they'd get up and go to eating and drinking, maybe have a little wine, and everybody would feel good and start to go back quilting again. Mm -hmm. They'd have a good time quilting like that at night. They get to quilting, then they go rock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, our mind is was we wanted ties to put the flowers in so that grass wouldn't grow around the flowers to ruin them. And we put them in, put the ties down, put the dirt in there and plant the flowers in there. We could keep the flowers more clean. We wanted round pots and we wasn't able to buy the round pots. And so we got the ties and put a field them for the day and then put the flowers. That's sad. That's how I grow it up out of In the garbage pile. That's where we got the ties from the garbage. We didn't have to buy them. <laughs> Just go out there and pick them up. 
I've been loving flowers all my days. I've been planting flowers. My little child owned up, I lack flowers. And I don't lack no flowers don't bloom. I want it to bloom. <laughs> I was born east of Cannon, east of Jackson in Cannon, Mississippi. That's where I was born there. And I was brought here in my mother's arms, a little bit of circling baby. Then after then, I got up so I could crawl around, walk, and I've been right around from Free Spring Church, Water Valley, Hartford, Hollow Spring, Tula Homer, Luxor Homer. I could dance, I could sing, ride horses, chop cotton and plow, hoop my holler, cut somersets, do all that stuff. I come up the hard way, been on the farm all of my days. Never been in no trouble. Well, never been resting kid and locked up in jail in my life. My mother taught me from a baby till I got big enough to know to get out on my own. When I started making a cane, blowing a cane, when I was uh, 13 years old, I just kept tuning and tuning and blowing and tuning. The more you do a thing, the more perfect come to you. Just like playing a guitar. You can start playing a guitar. One piece you ever learn one, you just keep on tuning and tuning until another comes. You learn that. And that's where I learned how to blow a cane. First began when I was in grammar school. As a little small kid, I always liked to draw. I just want to be drawing something. For the, and from then on up, I could just continue on until this present time, just drawing something. Even I could close my eyes and just imagine a certain feature or something, and I could draw it. Going to school, I always liked to, uh, you know, draw, make some little sketches. Lots of time that were, they didn't teach that subject in school, and uh, I'd get chest tired quite a few times for drawing in school, but that didn't discourage me. I just continued to, you know, sketch. Oh, those are my, some of them, my schoolmates I used to go to school with, and I, I used to practice bobbing. I'd cut hair, and, and seeing them, I could just fun to try to imitate. Yeah. In other words, it's the saying that a, a picture will speak louder than words, so to speak. You can show through a picture sometimes what you can never actually bring into words. Now this uh, was my cousin. Uh, she, after graduation, she had one of those little small clips. And I tried to see if I could sketch her out as she looked on her graduation day. And this is what I came up with. And this pretty good likeness of her. I'll tell you about the walking sticks. When I went to school, I used to read about George Washington, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, and all those fellas back there. So George Washington got his name in history by cutting down his daddy's cherry tree. Uh, he cut down a cherry tree and come to father our country. Abraham Lincoln made a record for himself by splitting rails. He got out and split rails and uh, after what he finally come to be president. Well, I said to myself, if these fellas can do something, well, I started out to see what I could do with a pocket knife. So I taken a pocket knife See, when was it, 19 and I believe it was about 36, 34, and I began making walking sticks. And I tried to place a stick in the hand of everybody around through this community, which I did. But yeah, of course, they sold, I sold them very cheap. I got as low, maybe 75 cents for some, and I got as high as five and six dollars for some. But I placed a stick in everybody's hand at once. I got some I put the names on, some I wrote little, uh, you know, phrases and different things. And 
little glasses, then little Bible verses, but they sold. And I sold them till I just got tired of making them. And see, 1933, when the panic was on, most all everybody in the community was on welfare, you know, and the bucket brigade. But, but I kept the wolf away from my door with walking sticks. And that's the truth. God forgive a black man. Look like he forgive me too. I have never went to school to do this. I learned this from my uncle by making a mule. And after he quit, I kept doing this sculpture work. If I could buy enough of this clay, I believe I could do a whole man. Kero, Kero. It's called Kero all the time. And this thing here, now look. Because it messed up now, this boy done shot it with BB guns and everything. Shot his nose out and everything. <laughs> now, when he first came with around me, he started making these things up out of the house where I was. So I told him, well, that son make me one of them things. So he made me an ashtray back in the head, in the bottom of the head there. He put on the shelf, well, that's all right. So every time he makes something, I tell him, I said, man, that's leave some stuff. Even people come in and say, who made that? And I said, a friend of mine. For sale, let's buy it, give him 50 cents for him. Sometimes I sell a lot. Either I'm sitting in front of him, it's, it's buying for me. My, this boy ain't an uncle bought somebody out of big, big, long, duck and bang. Sometimes they buy them and forget them, leave them on the shelf. But he's a wonderful man in this kind of stuff. I, I only did it uh, for my ass work. I like what he's doing. He's really good. He goes, everybody come around here, look for him and make a bull or something. Mm -hmm. 